In today's video, I'll show you how you can turn a bunch of stock images into a really cool desert scene. So let's get started. Today's video is brought to you by Acer's Concept D. I'm using the Concept D7 model today and I'll be sharing with you some of my favorite features of this laptop as well as what makes it a great choice for handling all sorts of demanding creative tasks. Today's photo manipulation is going to be pretty simple and relatively easy to achieve. So if you're new to photo manipulations or simply want to learn a bit more about some basic Photoshop compositing techniques, this is the right video for you as we will go through the process of masking, color matching, creating realistic shadows, as well as color grading in Photoshop. As usual, I will include links to all assets in the description below. But keep in mind that if you wish to use different assets, you can always find proper and useful images with a simple Google search. All right, now let's start by launching Adobe Photoshop for the resolution. I will go with 2000 by 2200 this time. I think this is good enough for IG feed. And the first image we want to drag and drop into our project here is the desert picture. We're going to use it to establish the main location of our scene. So I want to make sure it fills half of the frame at least and then hit confirm. Always remember to give every layer you import a proper name to avoid having a messy project. And you can do that by simply double clicking on the layer name to change it. Now I think the image is a bit too bright for the look I have in mind. So let's go to adjustments and add a levels adjustment layer and let's darken the midtones a bit just like that. I still want to add more depth to the scene and I think we can achieve that by adding some mountains further back in the distance and I have just the right image for that. I'm guessing this placement is good. Hit confirm. Let's call this one mountains. Now obviously we want to have the mountains appear behind the dunes towards the far background and there is a really quick way to do that without having to do much manual work. First let's disable the mountains, select the desert image, we're lucky enough to have clear sky, sharp edges and high color contrast all in one image so we'll take advantage of that as well as Photoshop's powerful selection ability so switch over to the quick selection tool and paint around a few pixels on the sky and just like that the sky has been automatically selected but we want to apply this on the mountains so let's switch back to that layer enable it and now click on add layer mask to apply the selection you'll notice a new mask layer has been created let's unlink that from the layer itself so we can move it independently use the ctrl t shortcut to transform i want to scale it up and maybe move it over here so with the layer mask selected switch over to the brush tool press x on your keyboard to swap between the foreground and background colors setting the foreground color to black allows you to use the brush tool as an eraser scale the brush up and set the hardness to zero percent bring the opacity back up to 100, the flow as well, and simply start erasing around the top. I think that looks good, but let's see if we can match the colors to the rest of the scene. So right above the mountains layer, let's add hue and saturation. Right click on it and create a clipping mask to make sure it only affects the layer that comes directly below it. Bring the saturation down let's change the hue over to red bring the brightness up much better i think the faded look makes it seem like the mountains are really far in the distance so that's great and as always if you'd like to download the final photoshop files you can find them on my patreon page where by paying a small fee you get access to every single one of my existing photo manipulation projects as well as the upcoming ones Another thing I want to do here is make the sky look a bit more dramatic. So let's bring this image over. Let's add a layer mask and again use the brush tool in the eraser mode to clear the foreground here since I'm only going to be using the sky. It still doesn't blend really well but we can definitely fix that. 
So let's add a new curves layer on top. Let's brighten things up. Switch over to blue, bring the curve down. I think that looks better and we will certainly be improving this as we move forward and add more color grading layers and other effects to our scene. Now naturally the color of the sky should affect the sand color at least around the horizon. So let's go all the way to the bottom and select the desert layer, create a new curves layer, lift the blues up. Let's bring the reds down, but we only want this around the top edges. So with the mask selected, press on Ctrl I on your keyboard to invert. Let's bring the brush opacity down to 65% and start restoring the curves effect around the horizon. It might not be that obvious, but it certainly makes a difference when it comes to blending everything together. We were pretty much done with setting up the background, so let's select all the layers and group them in one folder for the sake of keeping our project organized. Before working on the pirate ship, since this is happening in the desert, it makes complete sense to add some camels. First thing we need to do here is eliminate the background. I usually try to get as much help as possible from Photoshop's automated selection tools. The select subject feature didn't seem to do very well here. Same goes for the quick selection tool. And that's mainly due to the similarity in color between the subject and the background itself. So it seems like we have to do some manual work. First of all, let's switch over to the magic wand tool, rename the layer, and add the layer mask and try to select as much of the background and sand as possible. You can select multiple areas together by holding down shift. Don't worry if the selection doesn't look perfect as we can tweak that. I think this looks good enough for now and it saves me a lot of time already. I'm going to press on delete on my keyboard to get rid of the selection. And now let's focus on using the brush tool to refine the mask further by deleting unwanted areas and restoring back pixels which the magic wand failed to select. Now I've been using laptops to work on complex designs and videos for years now and when it comes to photo editing and image manipulation, the Concept D7 feels incredibly smooth and responsive. The NVIDIA RTX 2080 graphics card means the laptop can handle extremely intensive video and graphical editing as well as 3D rendering. The device comes with three cooling fans and optimized thermals, ensuring all components inside the device stay cool even when under heavy load. Back to Photoshop, once you're done with the selection, scale the camels down and let's move them all the way to the back. Obviously adding elements like this to certain locations in our scene gives us a better sense of distance and can emphasize on the scale of other elements in the artwork. I'm happy with the positioning, but I think I still need to tweak the colors. So let's add a new levels adjustment layer on top, create a clipping mask, increase the black output level and decrease the white output level. Let's brighten the mid-tones up. Alright, that looks good, but before moving on, let's quickly add some shadows. So hold down Alt on your keyboard and drag the camels layer all the way on top to duplicate it. Convert the layer to a smart object. Let's rename this. Now press on Ctrl T to transform. The main light source is coming from the right side. So let's rotate this accordingly. Hold down Ctrl to adjust the corners individually to be able to skew the layer and stretch it according to the light's direction. We still need to set this to a darker color. So let's right click on the layer, go to blending options, enable color overlay, set it to black. Maybe reduce the opacity down just like this. Cool, it looks really nice. We're slowly seeing the artwork come together and the story being built piece by piece. And I think now is the right time to focus on the main element in the scene, which is the pirate ship. So let's bring it over, scale it up and position it right in the middle, right over here. Rename the layer as usual. It's pretty much floating over the background right now. So obviously our next step here is to try and make the pirate ship look like it's part of the scene. 
and we can create that illusion by covering parts of the ship using the dunes in the foreground. So first add a layer mask. Before anything, let's select the layer and reduce its opacity for now to be able to see the dunes edges. Go back to the layer mask and now we can erase the parts of the ship that overlap with the sand dunes in the foreground. Once that's done, let's bring the layer's opacity back up. It's slowly coming together and the next thing we need to do here is as usual color matching. So let's add a new curves layer, create a clipping mask. I think I want to add a bit of a reddish tint. So let's switch over to the red channel, lift the curve up, bring the blue channel down. Alright, that looks good. Now obviously an element of this scale should be casting some really dark shadows. So let's work on that. Right below the pirate ship layer, add an exposure layer. Bring the exposure down till you can barely see the background. Invert the mask, select the brush tool, hardness set to zero, and restore the exposure effect very close to the ship edges. It doesn't look dark enough, so once again, let's paint over the same area. I wanna expand it further. But this time let's reduce the opacity down and paint another level of shadows a bit further from the ship to create a softer look. Looks good but it is spilling a bit over the foreground sand so let's erase that part as it's not supposed to be casting this far. Now back to the curves layer, I think I want to bring some of the green down. Let's see. Okay, not bad. Another thing we can do here to blend the ship a bit better with its environment is add some dust or sand particles on the ship itself. So add a new layer all the way on top. For a more realistic look, I'm going to switch over to this fog brush. This one doesn't come with Photoshop by default, but I'll link it down in the description along with other alternative brushes as well. Set the color to bright orange. Reduce the opacity. Let's adjust the angle of the brush a bit and start painting over areas which surface you think can collect sand particles. No need to overdo this. Let's see what it looks like before and after. Just nice. This is exactly the look I had in mind. I think it looks really good, but we don't have to stop here. You can actually add more, especially around corners and parts that are deep enough to hold some sand. Just imagine what would happen if this was really in motion, so you can even add some sand particles spilling off the edges like this to make things even more realistic. I think this is good enough for now. I believe the color is still inconsistent with the sand dunes we have. So with the layer selected, press on Ctrl and U to adjust the hue and match it back to our desert image. Awesome, it's really coming together. Let's group all the ship layers in one folder. Maybe we can still work a bit more on color matching and shadows here. So add an exposure layer, bring the exposure all the way down, create a clipping mask. I'm gonna use this to create some inner shadow on the ship itself, closer to the contact area with the ground. Next, add a levels adjustment layer. We can use this to darken the visible side of the ship, which is not really exposed that much to the sunlight. So let's erase the effect from the top sections. In fact, I think the sails can be a bit brighter. Let's create an exposure layer on top. Brighten things up and get rid of the effect from the side of the ship. We're almost there. Let's add another curves layer. Let's bring the red down. Same for the green channel, not so much for the blue, just a tiny bit. Don't forget to create a clipping mask. Maybe erase the effect from the sails to restore the original sand color back. Let's see, I think it looks good, maybe a bit too dark. Let's see if we can fix that from the levels layer. Brighten things up a bit, much better like this. And I just realized that the shadow we created in the beginning has disappeared somehow. This is probably due to some bad layer arrangement. So let's see, this is the layer. 
let's take it out of the group all right that fixed it frankly speaking i think this scene still looks a little bit boring so let's add some elements to it but before we continue i'd like to take a few seconds to say thank you for your continuous support to this channel that being said if you're into making digital art motion graphics visual effects make sure you subscribe and for exclusive updates more resources and feedback from the community make sure you check our discord server and now let's get back to the tutorial so what's a better way to decorate a pirate ship than an actual pirate flag so let's bring that in flip it horizontally i think this is the right spot for it the ship is moving and the flag is waving so it makes sense to add some motion blur to it adjust the angle i think it's a bit too much so let's reduce the distance and click ok i don't think it's supposed to be this sharp at this distance so let's add some gaussian blur i'll go with 0.5 for the radius here next add levels create a clipping mask and let's match the look of the flag to that of the ship perfect now because i imagine the ship crashing into the dunes here let's add some sand waves i have a perfect stock image to start with here let's give it a proper name to get rid of the black background let's change the blend mode to screen it's currently spilling over the dunes in the foreground so let's add a layer mask and erase this part we can add some motion blur here as well adjust the angle let's increase the distance and hit ok the color is still way off so let's work on that add hue and saturation layer create a clipping mask enable colorize bring the lightness down let's increase the saturation we can also adjust the hue a bit to match the color cool i think that looks good enough i can still see through the sand wave so let's go right below the image and add a new blank layer set the color to black and i'm going to use this to add some shadows behind the sand wave nothing too harsh nothing too crazy just enough to cover the ship i think i'll go back and play around with the hue and saturation a bit more to make sure it matches the rest of the scene all right i think it looks much better this way we're done with the ship so let's group all its layers in one folder now i think it would be cool to have some birds hovering over the sails here so let's bring this image in give it a proper name this one is going to be easy to mask out so let's go to select subject and photoshop will automatically identify the bird as you can see click on add layer mask and boom that's it scale it down let's move it over all the way up here give it a slight rotation i think it should be a little bit smaller great now duplicate the layer Control T to transform, give it a different orientation. Let's move it over here. I think this looks good, but of course, we still need to adjust the colors. So let's group them in one folder. Add levels above, create a clipping mask, bring the midtones down, decrease the white outputs, increase the black outputs. Let's have a look. I'm quite happy with the results here, it looks really convincing. So let's move on to work on the pirate. Scale the image down. Let's move it to the bottom here. As always, rename the layer. First thing I wanna do here is create a shadow. So let's duplicate the pirate. Let's call this one pirate shadow. Flip it down and skew it to change its direction to the left. I'm trying to match the feet together here, but one is shorter than the other. To deal with that, let's go to edit, transform, and choose warp. And by holding down control, you can create intersection points anywhere on the image. That way we can warp different parts individually. And that's exactly what I'm doing here with the leg. I think that did it. So now right click on the shadow layer, choose blending options, enable color overlay, the color is already set to black so let's hit confirm next let's go to filter blur and let's add a motion blur filter adjust both direction and distance we're almost there we can also add a layer mask and erase around the edges of the shadow to create a feathered look this actually looks pretty good perhaps we can increase the motion blur a little bit 
even better like this. So now let's work on color matching, add levels, create a clipping mask, increase the black outputs, let's bring the white outputs down a bit, maybe play around with the midtones here, as well as the highlights. Nice, I think the faded look helps a lot here. Let's add an exposure layer on top, create a clipping mask and bring the exposure down. Adjust the gamma and I'm going to use this to create some edge highlights. So let's select the mask and erase a bit of the effect around the right edges of the pirate. Let's see. I think I want to give that a bit of color, so let's adjust the hue and saturation, create a clipping mask, enable colorize, slide the hue to orange, bump up the saturation as well as the lightness. Now let's invert the mask and repaint the hue effect around the right edges of the pirate. Let's bring the opacity down and paint a bit more around here. Let's have a look. Perfect, that looks great. Now, since we have someone walking on the sand here, I think it's important to add some footsteps. I found the perfect image for this scenario, one that looks close enough to my environment. Add a layer mask, set the opacity to 100, and erase everything around the footsteps. You can spend as much time as you can on this one for a better result. Let's scale it down and move it over here. The perspective is good, but the image still doesn't blend really well with the scene. So let's add an exposure layer, create a clipping mask, bring the gamma down, decrease the exposure. All right, I think the sand still looks different on both images. So I'm going to mask out even more of that. I think I'll play around with the exposure properties a bit more. Nice! Now let's add a hue and saturation adjustment layer, decrease the saturation, lift the brightness up. I think that looks much better. It blends in really well like this. So let's group all these layers in one folder, which I'm gonna call Pirate. And another thing I wanna do here is add a bit of fog or dust around the scene. So let's create a new layer, set the color to bright orange, Choose the fog brush again, reset the angle back to zero, make sure the flow is below 10% and then simply start painting around the scene, maybe a bit more around the ship itself and with less intensity closer to the camera around the pirate. Let's have a look at the difference. Awesome, I think having this type of atmosphere makes things look a bit more dramatic and realistic. I also noticed the footsteps direction can be improved. To do that, I'm gonna rotate it to the right a bit. All right, much better. Now that we have all the elements grouped together, the composition is pretty much done, but we still need to work on the overall look and color grade the scene. So add an exposure layer all the way on top. Let's decrease the gamma, brighten things up a little, adjust the offset. And speaking of color grading, the Concept D7 comes with a beautiful 4K IPS screen. It's Pantone validated and supports 100% of the Adobe RGB color gamut, which ensures that the screen provides accurate colors. Color accuracy is essential for many people working in the creative field. So this is something that really sets this laptop apart from many of its competitors. Back to Photoshop, I want to add a bit of contrast. So let's add a new curves layer lift the highlights and bring the shadows down. You can also play around with the colors here. So let's switch over to blue, add a blue tint to the shadows by lifting that up, switch to red, let's bring that down. Nice, looking really good so far. Let's add another hue and saturation layer, add some saturation to the scene, brighten things up a little. Let's add another curves layer on top, I want to use this to add a bit of glow around some parts of the scene to try and achieve a bit of a dreamy effect. So let's increase the brightness, select the mask, Control i to invert, bring the opacity down and restore the effect around areas 
that are subject to more light, such as the higher areas of the sand dunes, as well as the sails and other areas of the pirate ship. I also want to add a vignette effect on top of everything to add some dimension to our scene. So let's create another curves layer, bring the curve down, and with the mask selected, simply erase the effect around the center of the image. Let's have a look. I think this is good enough. Let's go back to this curves layer, lift the blue shadows a bit more. I think we can add a bit more contrast as well. Maybe we can emphasize on the vignette effect a bit more. It's completely up to you here. It all depends on the look you want to achieve. If you have a color signature that you're after, then try your best to replicate that so you can keep your artworks consistent. Otherwise, it's a good exercise to experiment with different looks as long as you don't overdo it. If you just started with photo manipulation, you will definitely enjoy watching this next video. If you're up for a challenge and would like to learn about how you can bring a photo manipulation to life, check this animation tutorial. Either way, make sure you follow your passion. Stay safe everyone, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.